For those who know how to read, I have painted my autobiography. He began to discover Iberian art before he discovered the Negro art. And it was very important for him because this art was a Spanish art, you know, the art of his land before the Roman conquest. It was in Iberian art that there were distorted faces, big eyes, big ears. Mademoiselle d'Avignon. How that title irritates me. You know, the original title was the brothel of Avignon. I lived a few feet from the Carrera d'Avignon. But an art collector found it too difficult to bring a brothel into his home. So Samon gave it a new name. I first thought to put men in the painting. There were some in the original drawings. Then it changed, and the painting became what it is now. Even the most avant-garde painters of 1907, friends of Picasso like Brock and Durand, were shocked at the liberties which Picasso took in representation in this picture. Uh, the intense saturated colors, the extraordinarily distorted figures, went far beyond anything that had been proposed up until that time. The center figures are quite obviously the earliest ones. It was what happened to Picasso after his famous visit to the Trocadero Museum, where he saw the African sculptures, that changed the nature of this picture. I went to the old Trocadero Museum, an awful place. I was all alone there. I wanted to leave, but I didn't. I stayed. I understood that it was very important to stay. All alone in that dismal museum, some of the faces in the Demoiselle d'Arignon must have come to me that very day. Not because of the shapes of those masks and dolls, but because painting was my form of exorcism. He starts on the left side by simplifying the shapes of the body and goes on to make a mask-like head that is very reminiscent of certain African masks. He moves on to the two figures on the extreme right. Here he repaints the bodies, and especially the heads, in the form of African sculpture with extraordinarily intense saturated colors. Shu Keen said, what a loss for French art. Brock's first reaction was, it's as if you wanted to make us eat rope and drink gasoline. My girlfriends used to tell all the ugly models in Paris to go pose for Picasso. It is a picture to which every painter of the early 20th century owed a great debt, whether they were influenced in an immediate sense or not. When he began to, to paint Les, Les Demoiselles d'Avignon, he has used uh, paintings of Cézanne for the, the, the construction, the composition of his painting. Cézanne, he was our father. Everyone must have a father. It was he who protected us. For him, Cézanne was the biggest discovery. He found in Cézanne exactly what he was searching. He searched the way to give his paintings a great force. Something like what we call architecture. On one point, there was Negro art, and the other point, there was Cezanne. And he married both, searching in both art the construction, you know. Queridos amigos, 
We are here in Horta. My address is province of Tarragona near Gandesa. Posada Antonio Alter. Hasta la vista, Picasso. Dear Alice and Gertrude, life in Horta is a little monotonous. Pablo works all the time. They've given him a room to work at the baker's. He calls it his studio. The room is empty and he can work in peace. Forgive me for not having written sooner, but I haven't been feeling well. Picasso brought back with him to Paris landscapes of Horta, which were extraordinarily realistic, and all the same the beginning of Cubism. He'd taken some photographs of Horta, and when everyone protested against the fantasy of the pictures, he made them look at the photographs. I paint what I see. I have seen and felt differently maybe at different times in my life, but I have never painted anything but what I've seen or what I have felt. I've been working in Spain, Braque in the south of France at Lestac, and we were both amazed when we returned to Paris to find we were making the same discoveries. When we invented Cubism, we had no intention whatever of inventing Cubism. We sought to express reality with new and exciting materials which we didn't know how to handle. Braque said we were like two mountain climbers roped together. We said things to each other that no one else had said before or since, that no one else could understand. At one point, only we could tell our paintings apart. Do you think it concerns me that a particular picture of mine represents a particular person, Volard, for example? The vision of him gave me a preliminary emotion. Then, little by little, his actual presence becomes blurred. He is no longer volard, you see, but forms and colors. Forms and colors that have taken on the idea of volard and preserved the vibration of his life. All good portraits are to some degree caricatures. The Cubist found a picture dealer, the young Conweiler coming from London, full of enthusiasm, definitely becoming interested in Picasso, who after that could work in continuing security. In 1909, we moved from our old Bateau Lavoir to 11 Boulevard de Clichy, near Place Pigalle. The moving men were amazed at the difference between the two places. You people must have won the lottery, one of them said. Now our meals were served by a maid in a white apron. Picasso used to buy things on his walks, stuff which cluttered up the apartment. Old tapestries, musical instruments, African carvings and African masks. There was a competition between Picasso and Matisse as to who could discover the most beautiful African heads. Picasso worked in a large, airy studio, which no one was allowed to enter without his permission. The chaos had to be treated with respect he was always afraid the dust would get on his wet canvases, so the studio was never cleaned. The earth doesn't have a cleaning woman to dust it off. Its dust has saved everything that's come down to us from the past. I've always forbidden anyone to dust my studios, not because I was afraid they'd disturb my things, but because I've always counted on the protection of the dust. When Picasso began his way toward Cubism, Fernand has not understood what he was doing. I think it was the beginning of the, the clash between Fernand and him. Dear Gertrude and Alice, Pablo and I have been quarreling again. This time our separation may be for good. Fernand's beauty held me, but I couldn't stand any of her little ways. Picasso was at work on a picture on which was written Ma Jolie. I said to Alice, Fernand is certainly not Mal Jolie. I wonder who it is. In a few days, we knew Pablo had gone off with Ava. Ava, so small, so perfect. I love Ava, and I write her name in my pictures. I call her Mal Jolie.
Eva understood what uh, Picasso was trying to do. The beginning of the love with Eva is the period of the biggest uh, and boldest achievements of Picasso in the great period of Cubism, 1912, of his first collage, the first papier collé. At the time, everyone asked how much reality there actually was in Cubism. There is no abstract art. You must always start with something. Afterward, you can remove all traces of reality. The object will have left its indelible mark. It is what started the artist off, excited his ideas, and stirred up his emotions. But the reality in Cubism is not a reality you can take in your hand. It's more like a perfume in front of you, behind you, to the sides. The scent is everywhere, but you don't quite know where it comes from. The man bent over his guitar, a shearsman of sorts. The day was green. They said, you have a blue guitar. You do not play things as they are. The man replied, things as they are are changed upon the blue guitar. And they said then, but play you must, a tune beyond us yet ourselves, a tune upon the blue guitar of things exactly as they are. Every time when he came to abstractions, he uh, stopped because he was afraid to paint uh, decorative paintings, you know. There was something that pushed him toward abstraction many times in his life. But after, he turned back to the reality. He could not cut uh, the link between his painting and what he saw, what he feel. He could not cut it. And he was afraid to cut it. Then there was the war and all his friends left to go to the war. Brock and Durant were mobilized. Picasso, being Spanish, did not go to the war. I said goodbye to Brock and Durant in the station at Avignon. And I never really found them again. December 9th, 1915. My dear Gertrude, Ava has been continually sick and grows worse each day. It's the end, I think. I go to the sanatorium every day. I spend half my time in the metro. Even so, I have done a painting of a harlequin. So you see, as always, I do not stop. January 8th, 1916. My dear Gertrude, my poor Ava is dead. It has been a great sorrow for me. She was always so good to me. I know that you will miss her too. Then, little by little, Picasso commenced to know Jean Cocteau, and the result was that Cubism was to be put on the stage. For me, Picasso is the most sacred of all sacred monsters. He took me to the cafes, introduced me to the painters and poets. It was in the middle of the street, between the Café de la Rotonde and the Café Dome, that I asked Picasso to do the sets and costumes for the ballet parade. Picasso scandalized the Café de la Rotonde in accepting my invitation to paint a stage set for a Russian ballet was a crime. After all, Cubism is not a religion. Diaghilev carried us off, Picasso, Satie, and me, an enormous pink rhinoceros taking us to Rome on his back. There we were met by Massine, who was to do the choreography. This was Picasso's entrance into a world that was new to him.
attached himself to a ballerina, Olga Koklova, a Russian general's daughter. Olga is a really pure young girl. She has that classic beauty and pearly skin that has always attracted me. On a table looking out toward the Villa Medici, Picasso painted costumes for the Chinese conjurer. The American girl, the horse, the blue acrobats, and the managers. The managers were pure cubist. Parade brought together Picasso's first stage decor, Eric Satie's first orchestral score, Massine's first cubist choreography, and my first attempt to express myself without words. Parade was really the beginning of the general recognition of Picasso's work. On June the 12th, 1918, Picasso married Olga. Max Jacob, Apollinaire, and I were witnesses. In November, two days before the armistice, Apollinaire died of influenza. Picasso heard about it while shaving in front of a mirror. Struck by his own expression, he made a self-portrait. His farewell to Guillaume. The Picassos rented an apartment in the Rue de la Boissy among the picture galleries. This is also Rue de la Boétie. There were five or six rooms. Nobody was allowed to clean his studio. It was full of dust and cigarette butts. Olga lived downstairs, and there it was really very bourgeois. They entertained there, and even Picasso's pictures were framed in large gold frames. Picasso had a worldly side. Olga was a general's daughter, and Picasso liked that very much. He adored his son and spoiled him. His name was Paolo. There are many, many pictures of Paolo. Picasso lived in Paris and I lived in Barcelona. I went to see Picasso's mother. I told her, Madame, I'm leaving for Paris. Is there something you would like me to bring your son? She said, oh yes. And she gave me a large box with an encimada. A delicious cake from Mallorca in the shape of a spiral. I brought it to Picasso timidly. The encimada had completely dried out. But Picasso said to me, it's better for dunking in my chocolate. <laughs> the next year, I went to see Picasso again. He told me I would like to see your work. Certainly. 
It is a great honor for me. He came to my miserable hotel on the Boulevard Pasteur. He said, what you are doing is pure poetry. This has stayed in my memory. He sent the dealers to me. Nobody was interested in my work, but he always encouraged me. What he gave us was a summing up, profound and cruel, of the entire history of painting. He opened all doors for us. After this, we had a sense of freedom. We breathed the open air. In 1932, the great event of the Paris season was the Picasso retrospective. The prodigal children returning home clothed in gold. The multiplicity of styles in Picasso's art gave rise, especially during his lifetime, to criticisms that he was a charlatan or he didn't really have conviction about his style and so forth because he changed so often. I don't think any other painter in a lifetime has worked in as many styles as Picasso. Now, at the beginning, these styles follow one another uh, in time. But by the latter part of Picasso's career, these styles exist simultaneously as a kind of vocabulary on which he can draw at any given moment. And each style has a character of its own. And if one could say, well, there isn't the same kind of unity in Picasso's work because of all these styles that one has in the work of some other artists, nevertheless, there is a unity. It's a unity in variety. That is to say, every one of these styles issues from Picasso's psyche and his guts. And so they're all unified by the idea that they are stamped Picasso. Style is something which locks the painter into the same vision the same technique, the same formula, for years and years. Repetition is contrary to the laws of the spirit, to its flight forward. I'm never fixed. That's why I have no style. Down with style. Does God have a style? He made the guitar, the harlequin, the dachshund, the cat, the owl, the dove. So do I. Picasso had arrived. He and Olga lived as part of the fashionable world. He had all of the exterior symbols of success. Picasso enjoyed this life for a while, but not for long. And this is one of the reasons why he and his wife grew apart. Cars, maids, chauffeurs, governesses. A demon gave me these things. Wealth disgusts me. I thank God for having given me poverty for part of my life. I was amazed. Before me was a face and form that I had painted many times, years before I ever saw Marie Therese. Marie Therese represents la, les lignes courtes. Marie Therese represents the curved line and the triumph of color. It's a moment of happiness richness of color and fullness of form.
The influence of women is seen almost immediately in Picasso's work. I think he was aware of it, and that he did it as a kind of homage to the new woman in his life. It's as if, for the new woman, he didn't want the sheets of his former bed, and so he didn't want to use the same style. He offered the new woman a new style. He created for her a new world. Extraordinary. I don't think there's another artist in the world who could have done this. He invented, he created a style for a woman. Picasso's Minotaur has to be understood as Picasso's search into himself and Picasso's sense of himself as a tremendously libidinous, energetic figure. Picasso's interest in the 30s in the Minotaur, who's a kind of combination of man and bull, a human figure with a uh, bull or bison head, related Picasso very closely in the late 20s and the 30s to the Surrealists. We see him as alternately a monstrous figure, but also a tragic figure, because the tragedy is the absence of any kind of order or control over this immense power. Through the Minotaur, he says things that he couldn't say directly. It's the time when Marie-Thérèse gave birth to Maya. There is a picture which shows the Minotaur moving his home. That's a painting in a frame which he won't leave behind. The horse is having a baby. Do you see the tiny head and the little red feet? Do you see the child? July 13th, 1935. My dear friend Sabartes, I am all alone in the house. The interminable wrangling with lawyers has exhausted me. Olga refuses a divorce. My health has suffered. This is the worst time in my life. I have not painted for months. He was separated from his wife, Olga, and he didn't want to stay alone in his apartment. He started to go to cafes with Sabartes and his dog, and he saw friends nearly every evening. He ate at the Brasserie Lip. It was at that time that Eloire introduced him to a talented photographer, Dora Ma. Dorama spoke uh, fluently Spanish. That was very important because it was the time of the Spanish War. And Dorama was politically engaged against fascism. He was very pleased with her because she was clever. Quite the contrary of uh, Marie-Thérèse, you know. Marie-Thérèse was a private life and a secrecy. Dorama was the public life and a woman with uh, political ideas. The democratically elected Republic of Spain has been attacked by rebellious military forces under General Francisco Franco with military support from Hitler and Mussolini. of the Basques and the center of their tradition and culture was totally destroyed yesterday afternoon by air raiders. A powerful fleet of German-made airplanes unloaded bombs and incendiary projectiles on the town, while fighters plunged low to machine gun those civilians who had taken refuge in the fields.
The Spanish struggle is the fight of reaction against the people, against freedom. In the panel on which I am working, which I shall call Guernica, and in all my recent works, I clearly express my abhorrence of the military caste which has sunk Spain in an ocean of pain and death. Painting is not done to decorate apartments. It is an instrument of war for attack and defense against the enemy. A good painting, any painting, ought to bristle with razor blades. avec des intentions euh, tellement du moment, de l'époque euh, et de l'état dans lequel euh, tout le monde et moi nous nous trouvons. Et c'est très difficile. Au moment de Guernica, j'ai fait Guernica. At the time that I did Guernica, it was a great catastrophe, the first of many which we all went through. Nous avons suivi, n'est-ce pas Mais en France, c'est comme ça. C'est personnel, n'est-ce pas It's a diary that one writes for oneself. He came from Rilavoisi here and he needed a studio and, and basically he, he, because he had run out of room, you know, in the other place, he had no more space to paint in and, and, and here upstairs was a big, big room where he could do large things, larger things. So he got this place which was very, a simple place and uh, he, he worked and he was happy, happy working here. He lived here for about a bit more than 15 years until he went to live in the south of France. This is also where Guernica was painted. The painting could just fit between the floor and the ceiling. And when we came to Paris, we stayed here. So I, I lived here.